Welcome to Wildly Wealthy Life, the show that's all about exploring the different paths to a life of freedom and fulfillment and how that ripples through your personal life, family life, and to the community. Join husband and wife power couple Lee and Kat Hughes as they share people's stories from different backgrounds and lifestyles about what it means to live a life well lived. Tune in and take that first step to becoming the best version of yourself, personally and professionally, here on Wildly Wealthy Life. We sat down, we got a spreadsheet out. I kind of, you know, laid out everything and we just ultimately decided, you know, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and combine them. It's not about the money. It's not about the numbers. It's about achieving a goal together. Wealth is about finding where you're content in life. It's not necessarily about having a lot of things, but really saving up a nest egg is really just to help enable you to do what you want to do. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, maybe getting some of your time back or, you know, building even more wealth so that you can give more. All right, and welcome again to another edition of Wildly Wealthy Life Podcast. My name is Lee Hughes, and this is my lovely wife, Kat. Kat, who do you have the pleasure of introducing right now? <laughs> Today we have Rebecca, and she she's very passionate about financial freedom, personal finance, and her background was that she was able to pay off $250,000 in student loan debt, along with also saving up a one-year emergency fund, and also having a six-figure nest egg. And that is just really awesome because all of that happened before the age of 30, which is incredible. So Rebecca, hello. Hi, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thanks for being here. So Rebecca, all of that was amazing, right? All by the age of 30. How did you go around, go about doing that? And what made you so passionate about financial freedom? Yeah, so I definitely can't take all the credit. Uh, you know, my husband and I were definitely a team effort and we, we tackled that all together. And, you know, after we combined finances, we got really serious about, okay, let's, let's you know, put all our finances together, see where we're starting. You know, what does our net worth look like? How much debt do you have? How much debt do I have? And, you know, we ultimately made a plan like, okay, let's, let's just attack this debt. Um, and my husband had about, initially when he graduated, he had a had about $180,000 of student loans. So that 250 includes all the interest. So you can see just a massive amount of interest being paid. So when we combined finances, he had about $160,000 left. And uh, we decided, okay, let's just attack this and get it paid off as fast as we can. And we got it done in under two years. So that was a really huge accomplishment that we were able to, to do together. And you know, I think by us having two incomes and being able to budget, mostly tracking our spending and just kind of squeezing every dollar out, we were able to get that knocked out. And then that just opened up so many more opportunities. You know, suddenly we had just a huge increase in our cash flow. We didn't have these gigantic payments going out to the student loans anymore. Um, and then we got really into fire. My husband actually discovered fire and it just seemed like, okay, so we're pretty content with our lifestyle right now. Why don't we just keep saving and keep investing aggressively? And, you know, we didn't really feel like we were compromising our lifestyle because we were already pretty content and happy. So that kind of got us started on the journey. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, yeah. Where, where in all this was your military service too? Yeah. yeah. So my husband and I both served in the military. He graduated college about a year before me. So he started serving before me and he actually also got out about a year before me. Basically the debt was paid off by the time he got out of the military. And then I was still in and we were kind of getting our finances all figured out. Luckily he was able to land a really stable and awesome job. So we just continued saving aggressively. But yeah, we both served for about five years, just shifted a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and then ultimately my husband actually, uh, he did join the guard for about six months as well after active duty service, but decided it was just a little bit too much for kind of, we wanted a slower paced lifestyle. So yeah. <laughs> you both in the Air Force? Or? Yeah, we were both Air Force. Yeah. So we did Air Force ROTC while we were in college and we both commissioned as second lieutenants. Wow, cool. And then awesome. where did you go to school? We both went to uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. So he's a civil engineer and my degree is in math. So very technical, <laughs> technical fields. Wow. Yeah, kind of a nerdy school. So. Technical brainy family. I love that. Yes. yes. So uh, I was a scientist slash mathematician analyst analyzing a lot of data. Probably also why I love personal finance because I just love crunching wow. numbers. Mm -hmm. And my husband was an engineer in the Air Force. So wow. Awesome. And then with your transition, both of you went to school, obviously, first. What, what was the 
motivation to get into the military and what were some of the things that drove you to wanting to even get into paying off the debt? Uh, yeah. So, uh, the military, I hadn't really ever considered joining the military, to be honest. Uh, my senior year of high school, I had started looking at schools. I had never heard of RPI either. Uh, and I ended up getting a scholarship there. So I just went, you know, okay, let me go check out this school. And, and I was walking around all, all the tables that they have. And I ran into the ROTC table uh, and just started getting some information from them with the Air Force. And they were telling me about all the awesome opportunities of scholarships and just, you know, what your career could be like in the Air Force. And it just sounded really interesting, like it might be a good fit for me. So I went ahead and I applied uh, to the scholarship and it ended up getting it. That's how I kind of got into it in the first place. And it ended, it did end up being a very good fit for me. And I really enjoyed my time in the service. So, so that's how I got into the military. And then your other question was, how did we get uh, paying off the debt? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think for me personally, I just never liked the idea of debt. I just, I don't like owing people money. You know, um, I have had car loans in the past, which luckily we, we were able to pay all those off as well. But I just, I never liked the idea of owing people. And it just seemed like, you know, this huge mountain of debt just seemed like this anchor holding us back. And it, it's really, it's a little stressful when you start at a marriage and you're like, okay, we're this, we're this deep in the hole, you know, how can we get out of here and, and make a better life for ourselves? So that, that was kind of the motivation. And I don't think my husband ever really necessarily wanted me to help or for that to be my burden on his student loans. But, you know, ultimately we're a team, right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to work towards financial goals so that we can live a life we want. It's not necessarily about the money. It's about what type of life we want to live. And ultimately we want to do the same things. We want to be together. So we just decided let's, let's just combine everything and we'll attack that debt. And honestly, Regardless of the debt, I, I think we are much farther along together than I could have been by myself or he could have been by himself. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we're very fortunate to, to have a strong team. Yeah, that's awesome. What were the challenges of uh, when you guys combined debt? Because, you know, uh, for our listeners who are, you know, maybe are in a relationship and looking to be, get married and maybe one person has a huge amount of debt and the other person does not have that debt. What do you think would be the conversation prior to, you know, actually sealing the deal and getting married? And then and then once you're married, what are the challenges in, in combining those the finances? Yeah, I would say, you know, he and I never really discussed it too much. I obviously knew he had a significant amount of student loans, but we never really went into the details. Ultimately, you know, I think we chose each other because of the types of person, the types of people we are and, you know, made a very good team together. And we didn't really think of the financial aspect of it. Um, and to be honest, we were both just fresh out of college, you know, never really made that much money. So we had just started our careers out and things like that. So we never really considered that. And we actually kept our finances separate for the, about the first year and a half of our marriage. Um, and that had a little to do with, you know, the military did keep us separated for a period of time. So we both kind of had our own expenses anyways. But once we finally came together, we just, we sat down, we got a spreadsheet out. I kind of, you know, laid out everything and we just ultimately decided, you know, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and combine them. I guess by the time we did that, I actually didn't have any debt. Um, I had paid my car off, but you know, like I said earlier, it's just, it's not about the money. It's not about the numbers. It's about achieving a goal together. And my husband is a very responsible person. It's not like he's out there racking up all this credit card debt. You know, he went into a significant amount of debt to get a degree, which has certainly paid off. Granted, you could probably go to a much less expensive school and still thrive in a career. So definitely something to consider when you're looking at different colleges and going to a private university versus maybe a state school or even community college or, you know, trying to get those scholarships for sure. It was a little bit of a difficult discussion at first, but I think ultimately now that we, you know, we got on the same page and being able to accomplish so much together just makes me even more confident that it was the right decision for us. What are the conversations that you have currently too? Uh, currently? Right what, that's a great question. Actually, I mean, our most recent conversation about money was my husband wants to um, get this topper for his truck. So basically, you know, we came down, it's about $3,000 and I'm like, okay, that's kind of a lot, but let's sit down and let's see what that does to our budget. So I'm, I'm definitely the one that's more in the weeds in the spreadsheet but just big picture. Okay, well, if we do that, it sets us back in this area by this much. So that, that's kind of what the conversation goes now. My husband is definitely way more big picture. You know, he just wants to know like, 
big money movements, you know, where's our money going? Whereas I'm like every dollar I want to be knowing where it's going. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, that was just an example of one of our most recent discussions about, okay, we're going to make a big purchase. Let's sit down and actually talk through this. And it, honestly, it doesn't happen all that often where we're making that big of a purchase, but... <laughs> And when you're uh, when you were budgeting, you know, when you were tackling that student loan debt and doing all the budgeting, what were some of the maybe tips that you can share about the budgeting and also some of the sacrifices that you really had, maybe big sacrifices or small sacrifices that you had to do to kind of keep at the budget? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the best things that we did was we made sure to keep giving ourselves fun money or, you know, we call it allowances. You know, we made sure to keep doing that where we just each had a set amount of money, guilt-free spending. We don't need to check in with each other. So that was really helpful because it was a set amount. We knew that that's how much was budgeted for that, but we didn't have to talk about the little purchases we were making. We did a lot of our cooking at home. We didn't really travel a whole lot while we were paying off debt. You know, maybe some road trips trying to keep it more budget friendly and things like that. But ultimately, we were able to find that, okay, this type of lifestyle is really not that bad. You know, we weren't out buying the newest iPhone. We weren't out buying all new gadgets, things like that. But to this day, we still don't. And I think, you know, had we not had that debt, I don't know if if we would have learned those lessons where you don't need material possessions to find happiness. So I think that was that was a really valuable lesson that has really carried us through and has just enabled us to accelerate our net worth, you know, yeah. more rapidly. You've also uh, with your with your husband, you guys moved from New York out to Colorado. What was that whole discussion and and why Colorado of all places for you guys? Yeah, so that was a little bit out of our control. Um, so we both graduated from school in New York. We're both from New York originally. I actually got sent to Ohio for my first assignment, and he got sent to Japan. So hence wow. us being apart for a good amount of time. So he was in Japan for about two years, and I was in Ohio about a year and a half. Um, and then after we got married, the Air Force was able to find us an assignment together, which happened to be in Colorado. So that's how we ended up out here, and we've been here five, six years at this point. So he got out here about six months before me. So. Gotcha. That's nice. Awesome. And as far as, you know, once you tackle that debt and now that is, you know, you eliminated the debt, I know obviously you have some extra money that now is going into the emergency savings fund and all that, the the six-figure nest, nest egg and all that. What other things that did you guys do to kind of really reach that number for your emergency fund? You know, any other tips that you guys uh, may want to share on that? Yeah, I think, you know, one thing that you can do for if you have a specific goal in mind, like let's say it's a three month emergency fund or a six month emergency fund to kind of figure out, okay, when do I want to have that buy and dividing up the amount of money. So let's say, okay, I need $10,000 in a three month emergency fund and I want to do it by the end of the year maybe there's 10 months left in the year. Okay, so you can set aside $1000 a month and maybe, you know, if you if you have that flexibility in your budget, maybe you set that up on an auto transfer mm-hmm. and you go ahead and transfer that. Um, and something I found with our savings and our savings goals, we actually moved our savings to another bank. Part of that was to just get a better interest rate on our savings account, but it also helps us not touch that money. So that money is kind of sitting at another bank. It's a little bit of an inconvenience to go ahead and get it. And then as far as, you know, increasing our nest egg for retirement and things like that is really just educating ourselves on what options are available through work, for example. Getting out of the Air Force, you know, we had to do a lot of learning because you have a pension and a TSP through the military. It's pretty straightforward. And then when we got out, there's, you know, IRAs, which we've had IRAs in the past, but you've got 401ks, 403bs, other types of pensions, and then healthcare is a consideration. So really educating ourselves on what all the options are out there and then making sure to take full advantage of it. So if your employer offers any type of match, make sure to get that because that's going to really accelerate, you know, how fast you're able to save up your nest egg. What was the option that worked best for you guys? So I have a 403B, which is, it's essentially the same thing as a 401k through my company. uh, And they do a 10% match. So I just went ahead and actually just maxed it out to the IRS limit which is, I think, 19,500 this year. So that makes sure I get the match. But at the minimum, you know, if you can get that match, then that's really great. Um, My husband has a few different options. He has a 401k, a pension program, and a 457. 
So he works for more of a public entity. So they have a lot of options there. So he did, since we have the two incomes and it was actually only since 2019 was our first year, we just went ahead and took advantage of all of those retirement accounts. So we're very fortunate that we were able to do that that, and that his company offers it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you know what percentage of your income you're living off of currently? It's about, I would say 25 to 30% of our gross. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. That's amazing. So basically about 70% uh, goes to savings and stuff like that. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Taxes and then. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. So some goes to taxes. So it's it's yeah. around. Yeah. Last year we ended up having a very good year because we sold a home, so our savings was about seventy five percent. But this year it'll maybe be closer to sixty percent. Yeah, wow. that's really awesome. What are your newer goals now? That you know, I mean, obviously, if once you hit that number, right, the one year emergency fund and a uh, six figure nest egg, what would be your new goals? Yeah. So, you know, we're just going to keep staying on track with all of our savings goals. Pretty much everything is really automated. But one of the things that I find a growth area that I want to do more of and do better at is to give. (laughs) So I want to be able to give more, right? So by giving the, by having financial freedom, you know, you're able to, you know, maybe make a little bit more room for that. It's, It's hard to do when you have so much debt. And I definitely think people should take care of themselves first. But that's one of the things that I wanted to write down for one of my 2020 goals is, is to make sure I am giving more and being more intentional about that. That's awesome. Uh, what are the areas that you're looking to give or serve into? Yeah. So I think one of them obviously is very, uh, we're very passionate about is rescue animals. That's my dog that you just saw <laughs> walk by. <laughs> yeah. So we rescued her almost four years ago now. Uh, and it's been a really rewarding experience. We rescued an adult. She was a little bit older and, and definitely had some anxiety and things to work through. But but since we put in the work and put in that effort, it's just been a very rewarding experience and uh, just getting a little more educated on, you know, some of the real hardships that animals go through yeah. and, and to be able to give back to that. Cause a lot of dogs, you know, they end up getting euthanized and it's really sad. Yeah. So, um, that's one area. And then, you know, my husband and I definitely want to sit down and talk about some other areas that we're both passionate about together and, and want to give back to. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of, um, streams of income do you and your husband uh, mm-hmm. rely on or also like are looking to invest into? Yeah. So right now um, we just, we both have salary incomes and that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, obviously our investments are paying out dividends and things like that, but they just automatically get reinvested at the moment. So right now that is definitely an area of growth for us to look at different revenue streams of, of diversifying our income streams. Cause really we don't have that much diversification other than we're both working, which is which is definitely helpful, right? If one of us loses our job, we always have that other income. But one thing that we were looking into maybe getting into in the near future is some real estate investments Mm. as rental properties. So we're not anywhere near buying one, but we're just, we're starting the process of of trying to research it because that looks like a really solid way to kind of build up passive, mostly passive income. Obviously there's some work involved in it. And we have done a rental property in the past as an Airbnb, which was quite a bit of work. Work. So we're hoping to do something maybe a little less work than that, maybe tried and true long-term rentals, something we're definitely well, looking at. What I love is that once you're actually ready to dive into the real estate, uh, you know, and maybe do some buy and holds and stuff, you guys are pretty much already ready. You know, one of the things that I always tell people who approach at least me and ask me like, hey, how'd you get into real estate? And you know, what was it like buying your first property? And I always say, when you buy your first property, just really make sure you have some savings because you don't ever know. You know, once you own a house, life gets a little bit more complicated. Once you own rental properties, it gets it gets even more complicated. You know, our roof, it gets torn down if it's not covered by insurance for whatever reason, right? You always have those uh, uh, insurance companies commercials where well all of that's covered but this particular tree if it falls down there's just this specific tree it's not covered by the insurance <laughs> right <laughs> so that's really awesome that you already have the nest egg and some emergency you know savings because once you get into that like you're going to be prepared for what's to come so that's really yeah. awesome what is your um, idea of wealth now like what is your personal kind of definition of wealth 
Yeah, I, I really would say that wealth is about finding where you're content in life. It's not necessarily about having a lot of things, but really saving up a nest egg is really just to help enable you to do what you want to do. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, maybe getting some of your time back or, you know, building even more wealth so that you can give more. But, you know, making more money is great. And, and, writing checks and giving to organizations is great, but sometimes it's harder to give back your time. So if you can free up some time to help donate that or a certain skill set to causes that you're passionate about, I think that can go a long way as well. So to us, we're just looking to kind of have a, a simpler life, have enough to sustain our needs, but also be able to build up a level of abundance where we can be generous and, and give to things. Yeah, I love that because I think that we we obviously we're all all of us well not all of us but for the most part everybody in the FI movement really want to get to that place where you hit that number where you are completely financially free right but a lot of that just has to do with wanting to have freedom of time and to me personally at least from husband and I you know like it's always nice to be able to give financially but there's such a difference when you're able to actually serve with your time and so like you know like for you rest rescuing dogs like that takes a lot of time to be able to figure out their temperament their personality what were they anxious about what were they you know what were their kind of like the things that they got have gone through and to sit with them and to literally help them change and like have a better you know that's that's huge and that that takes time and so yeah that's that's a really awesome way to put it because hopefully, you know, for our listeners that they would get inspired that wealth is about really the freedom of your time to be able to hopefully help other people as well. So yeah, that's really yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, rescuing a dog. I mean, she has taken a lot of our time, but it's been a very rewarding experience. So yeah. what's your dog's name? Aurora. Aurora. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Aurora. <laughs> Does yeah. she have a tower? <laughs> is she sleeping all the time? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, she's named after Aurora Borealis, not the oh. Disney princess. <laughs> <laughs> Just to yeah. clarify. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what are three oh. actionable tips that you feel you could share with everybody to help them get on this, this path of financial independence? Yeah, absolutely. So I don't I don't want to sound super repetitive, but my first one would definitely be to avoid lifestyle inflation. So, you know, eventually you need to find a point where you have enough, you're content with your life. And if you can't find that, then you're always going to be chasing that next thing. So finding that point and just maintaining that lifestyle and working towards okay, how much do I need to maintain this lifestyle rather than always chasing the next thing? So that's my first tip. My second tip is to invest early and invest often. Even if you're just investing a very small amount of money to start, it gets you in the habit. And I also think that you should educate yourself on where you're investing. So even if that means reading a book and having a good understanding of of what it takes to build wealth and, and let that compound interest start working for you. And I do have a post where I list some of my favorite books about investing. So if you check Check out my website. I'll have a list there. With the Albert Einstein quote, I believe you put in there too, right? I did have the Albert Einstein quote in one of them. Yeah. Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. It's a good one. And it's it's really powerful. And in a few of my posts, I show some examples of, you know, a less amount of money, but doing it earlier is going to have a much bigger impact than kind of waiting and kicking that can down the road. So even if it's $50 a month, just kind of getting in that habit and learning where that money can best work for you. You, I think is it's very valuable. And then the third one is to have a plan. How much money you have coming in, know where it's going. That doesn't necessarily you need to be budgeting every penny. I like to do that. But even if you just have a big, I, I love budgeting. You and I, if you, long. <laughs> yes. Even if you just know the big picture plan of where all of your money is going. And that way, when you do want to make those big financial decisions, or you do want to make those big moves, you can kind of see how that fits into your plan and, and what those trade-offs are and always knowing, okay, if I want to take out some type of debt, know how much you're going to be paying for that that debt over the life of the loan, not just how much it's costing you every month. So actually kind of running running those numbers and seeing how it fits into your plan. Um, so those would be my, my three biggest tips. 
<laughs> yeah, those were awesome. really great tips. Yeah, thank you. I think lifestyle lifestyle inflation is a really good tip just because, you know, as you pursue financial freedom and all of a sudden you have a huge chunk of extra cash, you know, it's, it's always good to really keep just yourself in check and to understand if are you really content, you know, can you be content, you know, and, and all that just because, again, if you can't be content now, you're always going to be looking for that next big thing. You yeah, know? and I think yeah. nowadays too, like, I don't know if you've noticed this, Rebecca, but with uh, the subscription services, you can start getting into one subscription, then the next subscription, and the next subscription, and the next subscription. And suddenly you have like Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, everything. everything. <laughs> and then. <laughs> and you don't even use all of it because it's so overwhelmingly yeah. too yeah. many. <laughs> so we have so right. much abundance available to us. But then, yeah, I, I like that, like finding out where do you, where do you cut the line. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. Well, Thank you. We are going to go and wrap it up on uh, t- into our quick 10 rapid fire questions. These are 10 questions we ask our guests. And some of them are related to our podcast theme and some of them are just random questions we want to know about you. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number one, if you could choose one book to live by, what would it be? The Millionaire Next Door by Thomas Stanley. Yep. Now, that book, light bulb just went off in my head when I read that book and I was just, wow, just Change the way I look at money. So highly recommend. Awesome. Cool. Uh, personal hero, living or deceased, somebody you know or don't know? I'm going to say my husband. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? No, yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So um, we got married really young and, and sometimes you do, you don't know how it's going to work out. And just every day, I'm just amazed at how great of a person he is. So. Oh, that's so awesome. That's yeah. amazing. All right. The one thing you intentionally have to do every single day? Ooh, drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> two cups <laughs> Sounds fun. number four is a hobby that brings you the most joy uh right now i'd have to say blogging okay yeah, I'm, re- I'm really enjoying writing and kind of putting my thoughts out there nice number five most rewarding thing you've done for someone in need i would have to say my dog again <laughs> yeah. so sorry to bring her up but yeah i mean just rescuing her and, and giving her a chance at life and it definitely hasn't always been easy and and it's really hard when you rescue a dog but it's been really rewarding so awesome. that's really awesome yeah. all right number six first movie quote that comes to mind i'm gonna say from the movie lincoln i just watched that a few months ago i think that i don't know if it's the exact quote but it's two things are equal to the same thing they're equal to each other that just really resonated with me uh, and i think we have a, a long way to go in our country uh, to have equality and i just think it's so important that everybody is equal and i just that quote just really resonated with me i love very that timely. that's awesome yeah, yeah very yeah. timely uh, number seven last big purchase you made for yourself running sneakers just bought a pair for myself <laughs> maybe that's not that big i don't know no that's perfect <laughs> that's no. the purchase you made we'll take it <laughs> uh, number eight is a uh, food you cannot live without pizza mm, flavor what kind just cheese cheese okay yeah. all, all, <laughs> pizza. <laughs> all right number nine what is your spirit animal I'm going to say elephant just because I really like elephants. Oh, elephants are fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. And number 10, finish the sentence. If I'm stuck on an island by myself, dot, dot, dot. I'm going to look for some water. <laughs> because you cannot live without water <laughs> awesome. well, thank you so much for being here we have uh, two more parting questions for you okay. one is where can our listeners find out more about you and number two if you were to encourage our listeners to serve or give into something what would that be uh, so yeah, you can uh, check out my blog. It's myfatpurse.com. Uh, and I write all about, you know, our getting out of debt, provide lots of tips on saving money, budgeting, investing, building wealth. Uh, I'm also on Instagram at myfatpurse. Uh, I'm also on Facebook my fat purse as well. So those are the main ones I'm active on. And then as far as giving back, I would say for each individual person, it really has to be something that's personal to you. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say, go give to this cause that I'm passionate about. I'm going to say, go find what you're passionate about. And a lot of times it's going to relate back to something that's happened in your life. For me, I really like a local rescue that we have here where they actually take in animals that are at risk of euthanasia, basically Mm -hmm. deemed unadoptable. And then they re train them and find appropriate homes for them. So that's something that I'm really passionate about. And I love that our our local community has that type of organization. 
That's awesome. That's really wow. Awesome. Well, thank you for being with us. It's been great chatting with you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, really love the episode with Rebecca. I thought that just her insight on, you know, when she started her marriage and her husband had student loan debt and how, you know, again, like her husband didn't want her to take on that burden, but just the whole like, hey, let's do this together. It's okay if we did this together, we could tackle the debt faster. So I love that because I definitely have that <laughs> uh, kind of commonality with her just because you know, when we got married, uh, you had some student loan debts and we just tackled it together, you know? And so, yeah, that's why we were able to go debt free. And for me, I just, you know, having another veteran on was awesome. You Mm -hmm. know, I just really admire the fact that a lot more veterans are being able to become more financially stable, find more uh, options through the benefits that they have and be able to pay off debt and uh, get themselves in a better position so that they're not struggling day to day. Next week, we have Janine Letford. Janine is a dear friend of ours, an amazing, lovely powerhouse of a woman. She is an uh, awesome mother. Yes, a mother. A wonderful is- wife. <laughs> We're going to say more about her next week, but just take our word for it. You're going to enjoy this episode next week with Janine Lefford. So stay tuned. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Wildly Wealthy Life. We hope that this episode has helped you take another step towards living fully, giving freely, and building a legacy that deeply impacts your community. We'd love to hear what you think about today's show please leave us a review or like us on iTunes and YouTube and click the subscribe button so you won't miss a show. You can also visit us at wildlywealthylife.com for today's show notes. See you on our next episode. Thank you and may you live a wildly wealthy life.